Hello and welcome to This Week in Linux. Today would normally be an Ask Twill day, but I didn't receive very many questions, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you Fedora 13 Beta. It just released today, April 13th. You'll see this video on the 14th or sometime after that. Uh, I just wanted to go into it and see what's new, what's changed, and give you guys a first look at it. So if you see here, we're in the live CD, the live environment. It's actually waiting to do the automatic login. The last time I used it, when I used the alpha, the clicking on the automatic login here would go back to another automatic login. It seems that they fixed that. If I click login now, it just goes right into the operating system. Now I'm not exactly sure what's going on with these security alerts. I actually had to log out and back in. That's a little odd to see in a live environment, but we're still in the beta phase, so expect some things like that to show up. So by default, we've still got uh, Firefox here at the bar. We've got Evolution. We've got, like I said before, it's not Tomboy. It's actually Gnode. If you go into the applications list, all the, the standard things in your accessories. If you go into games, you've got just some very basic games. Graphics, you've got your Shotwell Photo Manager now and Simple Scan. I remember there was one or the other before. I seem to remember it was Shotwell and they've added Simple Scan to it. This goes to replace Xsane, which came with some older distributions and didn't work very well. I've heard that this works very nicely with scanners, but how many people honestly have a scanner these days? Moving on down the list, we've got Internet, it's got the traditional standard Empathy IM client, Firefox, Remote Desktop Viewer, and BitTorrent client. And under Office, you've got Evolution Mail and Calendar, and the OpenOffice Suite, and the Project Management Software. You know, I've never looked at this, let's see what it is. Oh look, it's actually Project Management Software. Yeah, I, I don't work on many projects, so I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Back under the Applications menu into Other, we have something new. We'll come back to that in just a minute, because I know it's somewhere else as well. Under sound and video, you have the audio CD extractor, Brasero, Cheese Webcam Booth, which is... It's nice to see that included in the default install, but moving on, we've got Movie Player and Rhythm Box. Very standard stuff, comes with just about any GNOME-based distribution. Under System Tools, we've got the Automatic Bug Reporting Tool, and here is something new, the Deja Dupe Backup Tool. A lot of distributions don't come with any sort of backup tool, so let's see what this one does. Restore and Backup. How idiot-proof can you make this? Awesome. Let's click Backup folder could not be displayed It's because we don't have anything in there so backup location we'll just say desktop and click forward what do we want to include in that well it looks like we actually don't have anything on the system currently to back up so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and create a document using gedit okay we'll include the file okay we'll just include the whole folder then and hit forward we're gonna encrypt it no include it from the desktop and hit backup there you go. That was quick. Of course, it was only one document. What did it create? It created a manifest, a diftar gz, and a sigtar gz. That's a lot more complex than I expected it to be. So from here, you can automatically schedule your backups on a daily, weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly basis. That's a really cool idea, and I like to see that. Let's see what happens if I go back into it and hit restore. Before I do that, let's delete this text file now. Gone. Completely gone. I did a shift delete, so it's actually, it's not even in the trash. Go ahead and hit restore. You see that found that backup, we'll hit forward, we'll store it to the original location, and restore. File was restored, but it doesn't show up. Well, I've done some messing around, it doesn't appear like the restore function works quite right yet. It could be a bug, I, I'll do some reading around and see if I can find out what's going on with that. Let's go back under system tools and see what else we've got. Disk usage analyzer, disk utility, we've got the file browser, the option to install it, SE Linux stuff that I never ever use. Um, system monitor and terminal. Under places you've got all the normal places you'd expect to see. Under system you've got preferences with a bunch of stuff. Color profiles, that looks new. Let's see, per device settings not supported, check your display driver. But you've got all these different color profiles you can select from. This is actually used to make sure that what you see on your screen is what's going to print out whenever you decide to print something. Very cool idea. So. Let's go ahead and take a look at some profiles. So you've got a bunch of different profiles you can select from, I guess, to to fit to whatever document type you're using. And under defaults, RGB types, th these are a lot of things that I'm not familiar with because I'm not into graphic design. But if you are, that's a very cool tool to have. So back under system preferences, you've got desktop effects like you would expect, uh, input method, keyboard, more messaging and VoIP accounts. I know I saw this in Ubuntu 10.04, let's see what it does here. Okay, it's the empathy accounts assistant, so it looks like the uh, the idea of the me menu is getting pushed back upstream, but 
I don't think that it's actually going to integrate in quite the same way. Yeah, it's empathies here. If I open it, yeah, it asks for, for accounts, but it doesn't do anything up here like the, the little mail icon you get in 10.04. Let's see, you've got network authentication. And here you can give it your Kerberos information. Great for enterprise, not terribly great for home users. Personal file sharing. There we go, great for home users. Not terribly great for enterprise. So it's, it's kind of nice, the, the mix, the best of both worlds kind of thing. Sorry to make the, the Hannah Montana reference there. Uh, preferred applications, remote desktop, lots of traditional stuff here. Administration has authentication. That gives you the local accounts, LDAP. Wow, that's a bunch of options to have. Love that. Fingerprint reader access. Uh, definitely some, some really cool ideas built in here. What else have we got? Bootloader. Error reading. Yeah, it's not installed yet, so that's not going to work. Have to do a full install to actually test that. You've got your firewall options. Here you can go in here and do all of your manual firewall settings. Very cool. You can disable it too if you don't want to use it. Network device control, uh, software updates, SE Linux management. And then there's the new feature. I hope that this stays with the, uh, with the final release. Click on release notes under documentation. And there you go. It opens up your Firefox with the latest release notes. As you see, it's still a draft. It's got that watermark on it. And down here, we've actually got some new features that come with Fedora 13. You've got automatic print driver installation, automatic language packs, a new user account tool. Let's go ahead and look at that while I'm thinking about it. Administration, users and groups. And this actually looks kind of familiar, but it's different from the one that comes with Ubuntu, definitely. Let's see, color management, I mentioned that earlier. Experimental 3D support for NVIDIA cards, very nice. A new way to install Fedora over the internet. Uh, I remember seeing something about that. I, I mentioned that in the alpha video. Uh, SSSD authentication, updates to NFS, Zarafa, a new open source groupware suite. I read this is actually supposed to be a drop-in exchange replacement, which is very nice. System rollback for BTRFS. I'm really looking forward to trying that out. Uh, better system tap probes, a Python 3 stack that can be run parallel to the existing Python stack. Very cool. Be able to run the Python 3 and 2.5, 2.6 applications at the same time. And support for the entire Java spec. Mm, a lot of people don't care about that. <laughs> and there's a full feature list at Fedora Projects Wiki. If you go to About This Computer, it gives you all the information you need to know specifically localhost. Uh, release 13, kernel version, GNOME version, the memory available, the type of processor. So I think that's about all there is to Fedora 13 beta so far. Just wanted to give you guys a very quick update. I'm not going to switch to video for this. Since you'll probably see this video on Wednesday the 14th, I'm going to be doing a live show today, the 14th, at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. There are tons of time converters on the web. I'll put one in the description box below if you want to check that out. I'll be doing the normal show Sunday at 9 p.m. If you have any questions for Ask Twill, make sure to ask them, and I will try my best to answer them in next week's episode, or I'll respond through a comment or through email, whichever way you prefer. That's all for today. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.